Want to forget your ex in 20 seconds or less? Sounds impossible, right? But bear with me. I'm going to teach you the actual science of why this works. But for those of you who don't know me, hi, I'm JC West and I help women who want to eliminate the longing and the anxiety of toxic relationships to rebuild self-worth and radiate respect. Now, if you're in or have ever been in a toxic relationship, then you know that trying to explain the mental and emotional abuse to somebody who's never experienced it before is near impossible. But this isn't a regular relationship that you can just get over. It's an addiction. And what do we know about addictions? They generalize. Stop a drinker from drinking and they'll start smoking. Stop them from smoking and they'll start overeating. Stop a love addict from feeling loved and they'll self-destruct. Or they'll go find another addiction. Or they'll become fixated on the next person selling love. They're going to start selling you love as soon as they get hits of attention from you. And then they're going to get a commitment from you. Whether it be a business deal, sex, a place to stay, secured finances, contacts, whatever it is. They're going to get on in. Then, once you start getting hooked on that and get trauma bonded, it becomes a drug dependency. They're attaching to you for narcissistic supply, which is basically significance in getting their needs met. You're attaching to them unconsciously because of a couple of things. They're fulfilling your unhealed trauma belief systems that you've got going on. They're a match, but they're pretending to be the exact opposite. So if your trauma, your unhealed history is about the people that love me abandon me, or the people that love me don't actually see me or hear me, whatever the trauma is, this person matches that completely and utterly. And that's the chemical reaction that you get when you feel like, oh my God, we're just such a match. We're just so chemically attracted to you because they're fulfilling your love blueprint, which is at the moment still broken. But they pretend and sometimes at a conscious level and they say, I will never leave you. I will never leave you. I will never let you down and I will never leave you. And then you go, oh, yes, finally, somebody who actually sees me and will never leave. But then what happens once you're hooked is that a toxic person will start lowering the bar and their true selves will come out through the cracks and they'll start testing your boundaries, seeing how much that they can let fly with their true shattered, delusional, disordered selves. And then as the delusional, disordered self that's in complete self-rage, they'll end up wanting to punish you. They want to hurt either emotionally, mentally, or physically anyone who challenges their self-concept, their behavior, or their identity. Whether it be an intimate partner, family member, whether it be a business deal, a business partner, or a friendship, or a neighbor. If you have a matching wound to whatever it is that they're capable of delivering, you're it. And until you clean up that wound, You're it. Of course, it goes deeper than that, but this is a serious problem. So I asked you guys, why is it that you've never sought help before? And these are some of the responses that I got. Because I'll never forget them. No, you won't forget it happened. But you can reprogram your brain not to care. Even if you still love them, even if you still have to see them, with a single technique, you can actually reprogram, rewire the neural pathways in your brain, put a blockage on them, connecting the thought or the trigger to the emotional response. This technique is fast, effective, and it comes from ancient Chinese medicine work with acupuncture points within the body. That particular technique I teach within my program, but at the end of this, I'm gonna teach you some very powerful techniques to change your emotional state and your mental direction instantly. But first, let's get through the other responses real quick. The heartbreak will eventually go away on its own. It'll fade. But sometimes the trauma bond can take years to fade if you don't reprogram the brain. And if you don't heal the underlying trauma and change the blueprint, then the chances that you're going to attract and be attracted to another emotionally unavailable person in the future is very high. It was just one bad relationship. Maybe, but these things do tend to come in patterns. So just think back for a second. Did any of your other relationships make you feel similar? Abandoned, lonely, unseen, unheard, 
devalued, unappreciated? Do any of your friendships do your parents? Because I just need to pick better men. You need to start being attracted to better men. We all have a subconscious blueprint about what love is supposed to look like, and more importantly, what it's supposed to feel like. That will be your default blueprint of what you're attracted to. And even if you think you should be attracted to another type of man, or you meet a man who would be good for you, he won't match your blueprint, so your attraction bells won't be going off. The chemicals in your brain won't start reacting. And if your self-worth, your self-confidence is low, then that's a double whammy because you won't truly believe deep down that you deserve anything better than your blueprint attracts you to. Why go to therapy? It's not my problem. They're the ones with the problem. They do have a problem. They're unwilling to the point of being unable to take any accountability, self-reflect, and fully accept or enter anybody else's world but their own. But you have a problem too because you must take accountability and realize that you have a wound that attracted them and you need to heal it. You must self-reflect and see how your actions and inactions played a part in the relationship, regardless of how malicious they were. Your ever flexible boundaries allowed for that. And you need to enter their world and learn exactly how and why they manipulate you, how they truly became the way that they are and what they're really running from. So you can be aware and prepared and only attract healthy relationships in your future. I've gone to therapy. I know where my issues come from, but I'm still in therapy and I feel the same. That's great because if you really know where your issues stem from, and I mean really know, then you're a step ahead. But the problem with talk therapy is that it usually just has you rehashing the traumas, which is just strengthening the neural pathways in your brain, ingraining that feeling and that identity even stronger. Cognitive behavioral therapy works on a conscious level with the, let's call them symptom emotions that you experience in your day-to-day -day life. EMDR, if your therapist knows that technique, works great for processing and reintegrating trauma. The only problem is EMDR works with single specific traumas and more often than not, let's call them symptom traumas that only led up to that because the root trauma occurred and the blueprint was in place. None of these therapy styles really focus on the identity level. Identity. We've got to get your self-concept, what you believe of who you are and what you deserve. We got to get those filters changed first and foremost. Because no matter what other things you try to do, if you have an identity, a blueprint, a set of filters about who you are and what you deserve in this world that says you can't have something, it doesn't matter who gives it to you. You're going to find a way to lose it. So we must heal ourselves at the identity level. And to do that, we got to look at the results we're producing and why we're that way. The moment we begin to heal on the identity level, and here's the thing that you really need to understand, is you are not your identity. That's one of the biggest delusions that we labor under is that our identity, our personas that we carry around inside us are us. They're not. They're suits of clothing you wear that you just like. You'll have a favorite shirt or a pair of shoes, right? And you have others, but when you put those on, you feel at your best. You feel the most familiar, which is what your brain source were, by the way. Most of the time when I regress people to cause, which is how you fix most problems that are identity-based, I have to take them between zero and six years old to when the blueprints that formed the foundations of who we are, the primary filters we see the world through, were created. Very doable, but you won't get there through the neocortex, through the rational, conscious, logical part of your brain. You will get there with hypnotherapy, though, because if you can get the subconscious mind to see it, you can change it. I just want to speak on identity for another minute because it's really important. You need to have an identity that supports what you want and you need to be willing to take the actions to facilitate that. A woman, a very smart and intelligent woman passed on a saying that she got from her mother who said, you can be, do, or have anything you want in this life as long as you're willing to be the person who can have that thing or exactly how she said it, to be the person to whom that thing can happen to. An identity is a filter. It's a set of beliefs about who you are and what you deserve, what's possible for you and what isn't, what's desirable and what isn't. 
our primary blueprints, our primary filters for our identity are our primary caregivers from zero to six. When you come into this world, there is no right, wrong, good, bad. This is me and that's you. Those are all distinctions that we acquire later. And if you think about our development and how we're formed, how we're created and how we come into this world, what do we start out as? You start out as one cell inside of something much greater and much larger than yourself. There is no us, there's only me. When you go through partration into separation through the birthing process, those filters aren't there yet. You've just changed, but it's all still you as far as your neurology is concerned. Around three to five years old is when we start to really understand the concept of other. Now, if there's developmental trauma that happens around that age, that can really stunt that awareness. And the result is a emotionally unavailable, toxic, narcissistic, or sociopathic individual. But when you're at this age from zero to six and you view what's going on around you, your brain, when it's at the most neuroplastic phase of its existence, your brain is making connections at hyperspeed. And everything you learn, everything you take in, every belief is like a suit of clothing or the equivalent thereof that you create. You have yourself and then you have something that reflects the self. And then you have the part of you that observes the reflection. And then it's like an infinity mirror that just keeps layering and layering and layering and layering until we eventually forget which one's the real us. We become identified with a suit of clothing that we wear, the personas that we carry. And as long as we remain identified with the suit of clothes, your neurology will fight to keep it. I want you to do this little experiment just to really understand what I mean. So take a moment, close your eyes, and just say out loud, I am my body. Notice what that experience is like. Now, keep them closed or close your eyes again and say, I have a body. What just happened? Maybe the last one felt a little different. Some people report little anxiety. The way your neurology works is that it's always concerned for itself. It's always focused on survival, whether literally or metaphorically. And so you develop personas and you develop behaviors based on the context of the environments that you find yourself in in order to cope and be effective. Now that doesn't mean that accepting something on the identity level is good or bad. It's the foundation of who we are, but shouldn't we have the flexibility to be who we really want to be instead of who we were programmed to be? Because that's what you're dealing with. Who is the you that you wanna be? Is it who you were programmed to be from zero to six years old? Because that's the foundation, that's the blueprint of your identity. And left to its own device, it's gonna keep running that way, the same way that it's been running from zero to six years old. But with the right techniques and understanding the coding system, you can actually rewrite your blueprints to be who you want to be instead of who you were programmed to be. But that was a tangent, so uh, back to the answers. Isn't hypnotherapy just fancy talk therapy? Yes and no. There is fancy talking involved, but the difference is on what level of the brain you're talking to. In traditional talk therapy, you're talking about recent events and reliving the trauma, which is just strengthening the neural pathways in your brain, strengthening those feelings through repetition. Even if you're gaining some insights and learning, those learnings can only go so far because you're learning them with your conscious mind. But humans are very primal, emotional creatures of habit. So we actually use our subconscious mind 90 to 95% of the day for all of our actions, responses, thoughts, and conclusions. So the moment you get over the moon happy and your body is flooded with oxytocin, or the moment you become stressed and your parasympathetic nervous system flips on, your subconscious instantly takes over and you flip into your subconscious blueprints. So the difference between talk therapy and fancy hypnosis talk therapy is that when you're in trance, your brain is actually going into a theta brainwave frequency, which is the same frequency your brain was operating in from zero to six years old, when your brain was like a sponge. When we deliver messages and insights, when the brain is operating at this level, the brain actually receives it. And not only that, when the brain is operating at this level, let's say the subconscious level, we now have access to all memories, beliefs, and events that created 
our identity, the filters we see the world through, your resulting issues in the first place. When you're being guided at the subconscious level, you have access to all your memories, even the ones that your conscious mind was doing its very best to protect you from looking at. But when we acknowledge them on this level, we can heal them. And it will not only change and transform the way that you feel about yourself in the present, but also how you see your world and see your future. So those are some of the responses that I got. But then I got more curious and I asked you guys, why is it that you think that you can't heal from all of this? And some of the responses I got were pretty heartbreaking. I just don't understand how anyone can act like that and why I can't stop thinking about him. Now you will. I explained the tip of the iceberg in regards to the reason for their manipulations and behaviors. But if you work with me or enroll in my program, you will understand it at a more practical and in-depth level than most psychotherapists. I don't know if I'll ever heal because I don't think I can ever trust again. To trust is to rely on someone to capitalize on your best interests. But before you can learn to trust other people, you need to start learning to trust yourself. You need to know that you can rely on you to capitalize on your best interests. If you stayed in a toxic relationship longer than you should have, then you've taught yourself that you cannot rely on you to capitalize on your best interests. But first you need to know what those best interests are, which is why I teach you exactly how to figure out you. Your boundaries, your life values, your wants, your needs, your personality, and your direction. I just don't think the pain and the anxiety will ever go away. I had anxiety before my relationship. We can neutralize the pain and eliminate the anxiety. I can show you how to do that. But if you don't fix the blueprint, you're gonna just end up walking right into another situation that looks different, but feels the same. This last one broke my heart because it resonated with me when I was jumping from toxic relationship to toxic relationship. And it does with most of my clients too. To be honest, I don't think I'm enough for anyone to wanna stay with me. I mean, I know when I'm single, but when I'm in a relationship, I never feel enough. That's your subconscious blueprint talking. That's your identity, and that's what we gotta fix. And if you're ready to really learn how to take control of your emotions, change your blueprint, alter your identity, and reclaim your life, I'd love to have a chat with you. You can find the link somewhere around here, but you can click it and you can pick your best time and day for me to give you a call. But you wanna start feeling better now, right? So. As promised, here is my secret to forgetting your toxic ex in 20 seconds or less. And I'm gonna give it to you in three simple steps. Secret number one, posture. In order to feel bad or to feel good, you actually have to put your body in a very specific position to do that. You actually have to angle your head in a certain way. You have to breathe in a certain way. You have to hold your frame in a certain way to actually feel bad. And one of the really neat things that I'm gonna teach you right now is that if you become aware of how much effort and work it takes to get yourself stuck and to feel bad, and if you become aware of what you need to do to get that way, what I find is that most people simply stop doing it because there's so many things that we just assume or that we just think are happening to us. But most of the time, it's not just happening to us. There's a recipe, there's a formula that's creating what's happening to us. The fastest way to change any body feeling or any emotional state that you're in is to change your posture and change your breathing. Just trust me and try this. Stand up. I obviously can't do that right now because I'm in a motorized vehicle, but stand up and close your eyes. I want you to remember a time in your life where you felt like an absolute total winner. You saw something you wanted. You made a decision right then and there that you were gonna get it. You made a plan. You put that plan into operation and you nailed it. Home run. I want you to see what you saw. Hear what you heard. Feel what you felt at that moment of victory. And I want you to just step into it. Just be there in that moment. Let it come flooding back to you. That's right. Now, I want you to keep this exact posture 
keep this exact breathing pattern and consciously try to feel bad. It's not working, right? Now I want you to keep your eyes closed or close your eyes again. And remember a time in your life when you saw something you wanted and you went for it, but it didn't work out. And I want you to let that feeling come back. I want you to go into that posture. Go into that breathing pattern. We're not going to stay there for too long, but I want to show you how this can make you emotionally bulletproof. What I want you to do is go into that feeling as far as you can. Go into that body posture. Go into the feelings. Now, while holding that posture, while holding that breathing rate, try to feel good. Now I want you to use all that willpower that you have. Hold on to that negative state, but move your body back to that positive winner posture. Now notice what happens. What, you mean you can't follow instructions? I told you to hold on to that shit. The posture and the breathing will make you bulletproof in any situation. So, remember to always stand up straight with your shoulders back. Secret number two for forgetting your toxic ex in 20 seconds or less. Turn off your internal dialogue. You know, that inner voice that asks you, why am I not good enough? Or tells you, I must be unattractive. Or is ruminating over all the things that you could have done and maybe it would have all worked out. You need a way to instantly shut that voice up when you start noticing it, and here's how. So try this out now, I'll do it with you. Pick a spot on the wall, or maybe an item that's in front of you somewhere, and focus on it. And as you focus on it, expand your vision to your peripherals. Without moving your eyes, without moving your head, see as much as you can see from your peripherals and then see if you can expand that wider without moving your eyes without moving your head focusing on that item expand your vision even wider almost like you're trying to get a 360 view around yourself now obviously that's not possible but that's what we're going for Now see if you can expand it even wider. Ooh, went into a trance there. What were you noticing? Your inner voice shuts off. And if you're staring at a cigarette pack, that voice that's saying, gotta have it, shuts off and you can easily walk away. This added bonus comes from Chinese medicine work. Press your tongue to the roof of your mouth, just behind your top teeth. This also shuts off internal dialogue. So if you use them together, all the better. And the last and final secret, secret number three, the power of questions. If you're using any kind of mantra right now, especially if it's not working, I challenge you to drop it and use this instead. What would someone who loves themselves do? See, your brain always does what it thinks you want it to do or what your subconscious blueprints tell it to do. So if you're asking yourself questions like, why am I not enough? Why would he cheat on me? Why am I so ugly? Your brain goes, ah, she wants a checklist and it'll give it to you. Do yourself the favor and start asking yourself, what would someone who loves themselves do? From now on, every day, all day. When you're deciding whether or not to eat that extra piece of cake, what would someone who loves themselves do? When you're deciding if you wanna to go to that party or not, what would someone who loves themselves do? When you get a text from your ex, what would someone who loves themselves do? When you're just sitting there bored and contemplating picking up your phone to go scroll social media, what would someone who loves themselves do? Now, put these three secrets together. So you start thinking about your ex, you start going into that downward spiral. Stop. Stand up straight, sit up straight with your shoulders back and your head up so you can't access that feeling state. Put your hands on your hips for extra effect. Then, pick a point and focus. And just allow your vision to be pushed to the peripherals. 
Keep pushing it almost as if you're trying to look all the way around you without moving your eyes, without moving your head. To shut off that internal dialogue that sparked that feeling state, that emotional state to begin with. And press your tongue to the roof of your mouth just behind your top teeth to give it that extra kick. Then, with your state clear and your thoughts empty, ask yourself, what would someone who loves themselves do? And give 100% of your focus and your effort to doing whatever it is that your brain offers you. And that's how to forget your toxic ex in 20 seconds or less. And if you want to eliminate the longing altogether and end the anxiety and reprogram your identity and change your subconscious blueprints to finally get what you want and be a match to and attracted to only healthy relationships, book a call with me. Because the only thing worse than wasted time in a toxic relationship is the wasted time trying to get over it. So let's get under it to the root and heal the feelings from the source.